Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? My beard is great. My name is Trey. Today I have a very, very special guest, right? Her name is Mina, and she's from a company called JL Global Tech, where she is the owner and proprietor, right? And she teaches everyone about cybersecurity. Yes, that's right. How to get started in cybersecurity. So everybody just go ahead and sit back and relax. We're going to give you guys a lot of information today about how to jumpstart your career in cybersecurity. So without further ado, hi, Mina. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Hey, so without further ado, because, you know, we have some great viewers out there, but some of them are impatient. So we're just going to jump right into it, you know. Now, right. let's talk about your career personally, right? So, like, what do you do right now for a living? What do you do? Uh, cybersecurity engineer. That's what I do for a living. Okay. And what did you do before, like, getting into cybersecurity or IT in general? Well, I did a couple of things. Um I ran a couple businesses. I had a carpet cleaning company. Uh, you know, I worked at a restaurant. I was a restaurant manager. Uh, I worked in federal security. So those are primarily my my roles and the things I did before I got into tech or cyber. Okay. Now, how hard it, because some of the viewers at home, right, you know, like for them imagining themselves working in like a corporate environment or you know, like IT or cybersecurity is kind of like going to the moon, right? So since you're someone that actually did it, right? Like how hard was your transition, you know, from going into the carpet cleaning business or the restaurant manager business and then transitioning into cybersecurity, if you don't mind? I will say that, you know, since all the jobs, none of them were really me sitting behind the desk, except for when I worked like as a leasing agent and only did that for a short period of time. Most of the time I was moving around. So it... It took me once I like it peaked interest, uh, actually start studying for certs and stuff. It took me three years. It took me three wow. years to land my first job. Okay. So like it took me three, years. three years. Three huh? years. I said, I know it sounds discouraging for anybody listening, but it took me three years because I didn't know how to do certain things. And I didn't have somebody saying, hey, this is how you do it. So that's why it took me three years. You know, once I actually was like, what is cyber to reading books and things like that? It actually took me three years. But had I known what I know now, obviously, it would have took me a lot shorter time. Like my students, they I'm jealous of them, but they land jobs within a couple of months, you know, after they complete the course. So I, it, it just my mistakes. I learned from them and, you know, I really like to help, you know, the students push it forward and they, they know how to answer questions and do all that. But it took me three years and that was a long road. It was a long road. But at the end of the day, it's still, you know, less time than a degree, you know, so. So let's 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 unpack that a little bit, if you don't mind. So it took you three years. So mm -hmm. if you can remember, right, what made okay. you go back and make the decision to say, OK, look, what I'm doing right now. I want to go into another direction, okay. you know, starting right there. And then what steps, like, how did you determine, okay, this is the path for me in cybersecurity? Man, so this is really what happened. I used to work uh, federal security and where I would just check credentials and allow people access to uh, federal buildings. And so what do people do in these federal buildings? They work various jobs. You got HR, you got all these people doing all these different things. You got commercial companies, you got all these different people in this one government building. But the consistent thing that I kept seeing was Every time like I'm screening people and I'm asking them what they do because I'm just always on the next thing. Like I went from restaurant to clean a carpet. So I was just interested in like what these people doing in this building. I know it's important. They got us here with guns and, you know, doing that. But what are they doing? And 90 percent of them were saying they were in cybersecurity. Or in tech, not necessarily cybersecurity, but they said that they were, you know, dealing with networks. They were doing something and it was all tied to tech. And so I was like, hmm. And then so the more questions I asked, the more information I got. And, you know, I would just ask people what they were doing and came to Google and cyber, you know, just the typical things you do. But the consistent thing was seeing that people were employed and then seeing what kind of money they were making. And then the money is what got me like, you know what, you know, entrepreneurship can kind of wait until I kind of establish myself. But the it was it was really the money and it was really the the overall longevity. Everybody that worked for the government was doing tech 
in some way, whether it was help desk, whether people checking your phones, whether, you know, they were doing something. So it was just like, man, I got to figure out how to get onto this because how long can you do certain jobs where you like security, you're going to be sitting behind a desk, no real benefits. I mean, with, with tech, they giving you great benefits. You know, you, you're able to take care of your family, you're able to buy a house. I used to work two jobs, uh, two security jobs, uh, one in a day, one at night. Um, and I was studying for uh, Oracle DBA at the same time. And I was just really trying to figure out how to get into tech. So I wound up getting my security plus and I was asking a dude that, you know, he was cool enough to say hi to me when I was at work doing security. And I said, hey, uh, I got my security plus. Put me on. I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, I ate, like I failed the first test, but the second one, I actually got it. And so I said, man, put me on. And you like in tech and you've been, he old, he was an older guy. And so he was like, oh, I, I can't, I can't put you on. What you mean? You don't got no experience. He's like, but good job on the cert. And I was like, all right, bet, bet. So everybody I talked to that did tech, I'll, you know, will figure out more and more of what I need to do. And lo and behold, none of that shit worked. <laughs> nobody could help me. Uh, nobody was able to put me on and give me a job. Um, I'm from Chicago and I'm in a DMV area now. And so I don't have a buddy, buddy hookups and the nepotism that other people have the privilege of. So it was just, honestly, what helped me was work in security and I got me a federal, I got a clearance. And once they gave me a clearance, Companies start biting. Companies was like, oh, you got your security plus and you got a clearance? Well, we'll train you. Because to them, a clearance is like someone having a degree. And they mm -hmm. in tech, it's really like that. Like, if you have a security clearance, that's $20,000 that they don't have to spend on investigating you. And it lets the public know that they could trust you more. That's what a clearance is. It lets the public know that they can trust you. You know, people have assets and they want to have it protected and they want to know this person going to steal from me. This person have bad credit. Is this a shady person? Is this a person of good character? So the clearance really helped me a lot, especially in this area. And um, I basically kept studying it up and I wound up getting my first job, but it took three years of no's <laughs> <laughs> and fails on interviews. <laughs> 